Welcome back to Nuka Mac. Last time, following Darby's apparent death, a vial of his heart's blood containing his soul was used to embrace an English mortal named Thurgood Dunstan in the hopes that Darby's soul would take over Thurgood's body. However, Thurgood is, thus far, still in control of his body, and the fate of Darby's soul, presumably trapped within Thurgood's body, has yet to be determined. After Prince Archibald explained to the Tremere Elizabeth Blackburn that villains committed to the genocide of all vampires and claiming to be the biblical four horsemen of the apocalypse have arrived in New Kamak, she suggested to Augustine that he begin an accelerated thaumaturgical training regimen, which will help him be ready for an upcoming battle at the risk of scarring his mind. She then gave Prince Archibald a magic wand that will transform four metallic hippo sculptures found in Club Wonderland into the fleshy, full-sized, actual hippos that they used to be before the Tremere uh, turned them into sculptures. Uh, her idea being that if an actual battle for the fate of the world is to take place in New Kamak, Prince Archibald needs to know everything that is in his arsenal, and apparently... Four full-sized war hippos currently in stasis is part of that arsenal. We are at uh, quite nearly the end of the night. It is about 4 a.m. Sunrise is in a, about an hour and 45 minutes. Just a reminder, uh, Augustine, Onion Jack was left to finish cleaning up those four houses in Shedtown that those ghastly, bloody rituals took place in, and is also currently babysitting your bear, Paddington? Is that, is that what we call the bear? That is, that is correct. The bear cub. Also, the group offered to spend the last few hours of tonight taking Thurgood on his first hunt. And I'm going to slip in because I don't think it was addressed. Uh, let's say everything that was on... Uh, on Darby in his possession when he died has been slipped into the pockets of Thurgood and he's also been handed, of course, the Chakram hat. Wow. <laughs> Blazes? This, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. The opposite opinion of what uh, what Darby thought of it. So what we, what I suggest that we do, if, uh, if you want to spend the last couple hours of the night taking Thurgood on a hunt because he is uh, quite a bit uh, thirsty is we fast forward through that and we say that he can get in uh, hunting and successfully finding uh, three people uh, if he has the assistance of someone at least one other PC coming with him. Are we okay, okay <laughs> with kind of like fast forwarding through that? Definitely. Uh, yeah, and real quick, just want to confirm, I my character sheet's showing full blood pool. Is that accurate on your end? That's what I see, too. Mostly okay. because uh, a, a few of you fed, you and Excavo both totally filled yourself up on Thurgood's blood pre-embrace. Oh, yeah. So, Thurgood... Thurgood got some Darby in him, and I've got some Thurgood in me. Like, it's it's just all love. It's a big love fest. We're just embracing each other. Um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, who who all is uh, helping take Thurgood on uh, on his hunt? Is it everybody, or is someone else breaking off to do their own thing? Seems like a good. Um, seems like a fun time to to watch. <laughs> I want to see what he does. So what, we just sit here and watch as they go about their lives and then choose when to strike? Just do whatever, <laughs> just uh, do whatever feels right. Well, all I know now is I'm very hungry. All right, well, the four of you get into one of your cars and start cruising around. It is quite late, so there aren't a lot of people on the street, but uh, you spot... Um, he was driving, by the way. Thurgood definitely gets into the back. <laughs> right away. First thing, he jumps right into the back of the car. I don't know my way around this town very well. Prince Archibald, are you going to contest me for control of this 
vehicle. Oh. <laughs> by, by all means, Augustine, you can, you can drive. Awesome. And I'm I think the, the moment that Augustine touches the keys, just like a, a, in the in the deep back of, uh, of Thurgood's mind, is like a, a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the vehicle that you have is uh, your Lamborghini Aventador, which is a two-seater. Consequently, yeah, everyone's pretty pretty cramped in there. I, I'm going to say that does... Yeah, so there are... Th there's a driver, and then there are three people in the passenger seat. Uh, with Thurgood jumping in first. Uh, yeah, Thurgood on bottom. Yep. And then two people on top of you. <laughs> One on each leg. Just pointing out that the, the four-seater is still outside of the library because uh, Excavo took it to the library and then she was abducted. So we'll say you swing by the Barbie library. El Camino. Didn't they drive that to the Chantry? And then back? Like, we, they had Darby's car. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. You have, you have two cars there. So, yeah, yeah you split up into, uh, into two cars. The El Camino is a two-seater, too, right? I think there's like a bucket seat. Okay. Well, sure. Well, whatever. Ba, ba, ba. So collectively, <laughs> somehow, uh, you uh, cruise around the town and you find uh, like people lingering as a bar is letting out late. Uh, a, a couple bars scattered around the city. <laughs> and you successfully find someone who's uh, strayed from the pack and is going down an alley that Thurgood could feed on. And I'm going to use my handy uh, random NPC generator that I, I've whipped up with a bunch of... Uh, actually, uh, this won't matter unless if this is the one. The mechanic that we worked out is when a new venture who doesn't have a feeding restriction yet uh, feeds, uh, he or she rolls a d10. If it comes up one, then there was something special in that blood, and that's the only kind of blood they could ever feed from again. Thurgood, go ahead and give me a roll of a d10, please. Coming in, roll. Nope. This ain't it. You feed from some right. rando, and, uh, the blood, it, the normal, normal blood, it's fine. Nothing special happens. Yeah, let's let's say we'll we'll do three hunts, and then you end up with a full blood pool at the end. Uh, let's go to the second one. Give me another D10 roll. Oh, the thrill of the hunt! Yes, yes, I'm starting to get into this quite a bit. <laughs> He's got the blood on it on his face. So six, <laughs> not the one. <laughs> the hunt. Oh dear. And give me <laughs> one more roll. Another nope. six. This one's not the one. So you guys swing by and pick up the uh, what was the other vehicle? A BMW, an Aston Martin uh, yeah. that Excavo was driving. Uh, you're all headed back to Darby Manor. Does Augustine wish to swing through Shed Town and pick up Onion Jack and his Bear Cub? <clears throat> Uh, and we, we have adequate vehicles for that at this yep. point, yeah? We've collected all the cool. cars, so... Yeah, um, let's do that. Okay, you go to... You uh, swing by a couple of the, the addresses where the hobo Onion Jack has been tasked with cleaning up uh, scenes of animal dismemberments, uh, which the, uh, the real estate agents in charge of the uh the powell's guns uh gun store deal has kind of shanghaied you into dealing with and uh in one of them you you see onion jack out front playing with a bear cub uh apparently done with all of his work and he sees you and he says why hello there mr augustine my good man as always Every bit the expectation I had. Can thank you so much for your for your uh, diligent labor and the safe security and shelter of my dearest bear cub, Good Pat. 
Oh, oh yeah, he and, was, he was uh, a good I, good companion. He he helped me out. He handed me things, and he, he even ate ate some of the entrails that were left over. So yeah, we we cleaned it up nice and good for him, Mister Augustine. Uh, I produce two tomatoes from my pockets uh, and hand <laughs> one to <laughs> one to Paddington and uh, one to Onion Jack. Oh my God! Monetary. Monetary gains to be delivered uh, upon, you know, our arrival at a place of normality. Thank you for seeing my compatriots through potentially almost certain doom. Oh, Mr. Augustine, it feels like Thanksgiving has come early. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to eat this up and I'm going to spit all the seeds out so I can plant them in my dirt pile that I have in my alley. So. Well, thank you. So perhaps this could feed me in, in future days too. And he starts just kind of like cramming it all in his mouth and trying to spit out the seeds. But because of how tomato seeds work, it's just all coming out as like tomato snot, just like just like a pile <laughs> of gross goobery, like frog egg looking seeds. Tomato seeds are kind of gross. I think we can all. Yeah. I feel that. And then he just oh, sort of like tomatoes. slides the whole thing into like an inside pocket of his jacket and pats it down. <laughs> so he's just got like one wet tit just <laughs> saturated <laughs> with Can that be our new one bit? Can that be our new bit? One wet tit? <laughs> that the one just wet tit. There I, am. I can see that being a ska band. Yeah. <laughs> I'd skank to that. <laughs> so you pick up man. The... Oh. The, the things are abound. Well, almost potentially certain whom are no longer the most recent viability. Uh, we must, we mustn't dally and be on our way amongst our other endeavors. Would you care to join us in procuring your? vehicular transportation to our next endeavor. Mr. Augustine, you ride I, here on top of all of our la laps, Jack. Well, I, I don't I don't totally understand what Mr. Augustine said because yeah. he he talks <laughs> like books, but I did hear that you want me to come along, so so I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a saddle up and, and ride with you. <laughs> Clearly, he understands something. Uh, like, I like this. This is great. This is awesome. Uh -oh. So he hops no, into the the El Camino <laughs> mullet. Like, All right. Uh, and I guess where where are we off to, everybody? What are we what, what are we doing? Are you dropping him off in his alley, or are you taking him back to Darby Manor? Fuck! I think it, <laughs> I'm the pretty bunk, sure the bunk I'm... beds are not ready, so. I did promise him shelter, though, and uh, Thurgood doesn't know what a normal, what Darby's bed is like. As far as Thurgood knows, Thurgood's got a couch. <laughs> so I think I think we're taking him back to Darby Manor, like, and I'm bunking him up in Darby's bed. This is so <laughs> outrageous. Do you know what any bed's like? What? Well, no, we tell Thurgood, like, Darby always really liked working on cars, so he would sleep in the garage. <laughs> Where presumably, isn't there, like, a new corpse that I just let die of, like, <laughs> lack of blood out there? If you get hungry... Every time you bring a human night. back to the place, it's what you... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I'm, I, think that's the, I think that's the ticket. I think we're bringing him back to the manor. <laughs> I think my favorite part Look is I, I don't understand the Augustine... Darby rivalry. I don't know what started it. I don't know if anything started it, or if we're just doing it because it's funny. But just yeah, it, it naturally <laughs> manifested at some point, and I'm not sure either. What, it was what right from the top. Just episode one. I don't really remember why. It was just Darby <laughs> fucking hates this guy. <laughs> that, that's where we went from there. Like that's just where that's just how it goes. I, if I had to guess, it's because he speaks lack like books. <laughs> but, uh, so <laughs> we didn't back then, though. Nobody listened to the first episode. You'll see how different we all were. Hearing you do Augustine, but doing an impression of Darby as Augustine. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you, you listen to the first like episode, books? 
all the all the audio is is absolute garbage. There was so much. Yeah, Andy. I think my it really. I want to like re-record all of my monologues because somehow I had like an echo of my voice was coming through in all of it, and you could see me like kind of taking my headphones off of my ears so I could talk without losing my mind. Curiously, you notice a large illuminated vertical transparent tube at each corner of the dance floor. Wide enough for a person to fit inside of, like the kind Augustus Gloop got stuck in in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And we didn't have separate audio tracks, so like there's just no way to fix that. And anyone who watches the first episode and wants to push on to like subsequent episodes uh damn thanks um so and, Here's and what like and do. subscribe after, after this whole um campaign is over we're gonna start recording new Kamak kai where that's <laughs> Or super new Kamek. All, all condensed, the greatest hits of New Kamek V, New Kamek Super. I just speed up every every episode like 150 <laughs> percent speed. <laughs> Welcome back to New Kamek on the last session. Yeah. Um, so uh, all three vehicles: the El Camino, the Lamborghini, and the Aston Martin return back to Darby Manor. Uh, the sun is about to come up. Uh, Thurgood is instructed to sleep in the El Camino in the closed garage, which uh, fortunately has no windows to let light in. Oh, um, wait, wait a minute. My shirt says Darby on it, and and you said this was Darby Manor, and I sleep here in the garage? Stir you, my good man, that Darby insisted on being closest to the things dearest to him, which were typically uh, trivial. Uh, I assume that <laughs> included his El Camino and other such mechanical, dusty, material goods. It's Meanwhile, quite I am... The stupidest looking car I have ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> well, at least one of the about. people inhabiting that body is speaking sense. I tried to tell him this is the very same thing, and it did not seem to register with him. You're sure there's not a bed of any kind inside? During that? this conversation, I am arm in arm with Onion Jack, leading him in the door, saying... Okay, Onion Jack, let's get you to Darby's bed. I mean, your bed. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> right. It could be argued that since it's Darby Manor, everything is, in a sense, Darby's? Not Thurgood's, apparently. Womp womp. So, uh, well, as we do have Thurgood's enough. broom closet. <laughs> Uh, as you lead Onion Jack into Darby Manor, he is, he doesn't fall over, but he's constantly bumping into stuff and like kind of, kind of stumbling over, over things because he, he keeps looking around like all around, like he's, he's seeing, uh, like he's stoned and in a planetarium or, or something just like, well, I'll be, you got lights on the ceiling and I don't know if that's his voice. Uh, just uh, a, a gape or a ghast or a gog at all of the things, just mundane things on on the walls and, and the ceiling and, and everything. And almost like in a in a dream state, you you lead him into uh, Dar what was Darby's room and into a bed and uh, he just starts kind of rolling around. And being like, what? What's this made of? It, it's this isn't hay. There, there ain't no rats in this or nothing, Mister Archibald. This is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Well, Onion Jack, you're my best friend and my brother, and I love you very much. So, think nothing of it. And I, I bet I, I won't hardly get rained on at all tonight. Not even a little bit, actually, unless you go outside and it's raining. And he is already asleep and snoring like a cartoon hobo, doing that. Oh, I'm being. 
I kind of like, I gaze down at something I have in my hands, which is like a children's book that I was going to read out loud to him. I'm just like, I shake my head and just say, next time. And walk out of the room, gently closing the door and turning out the lights. And uh, Augustine, who I think we established shares a room with Darby, also goes to bed, door is closed, Bear Cub's in there, Bear Cub's behaving himself, Archibald, Xcavo go to their beds, and everyone goes to sleep. Now we have uh, a bunch of routine things that we do when it is a new day. The first one is a new one. Darby and Thurgood must both uh, do an opposed willpower roll. Uh, Darby has five willpower. Mm -hmm. Thurgood has four willpower. So, Steve, if you could kindly uh, roll 5d10 and 4d10. Two successes for Darby. Three for Thurgood. Three for Thurgood. So you will wake up as Thurgood again, uh, but that could potentially change. Um, you could potentially switch back to Darby. We're still working out the mechanics for that. Do, do, do. Excavo, you have a dream, and in that dream, oh, you yeah. are kind of in a you're wandering around in a in a black void and you are are trying to find your way out or find something just kind of kind of lost in it and then you hear a voice a disembodied voice that calls out to you and it says hello is someone there i hello? Wait. i listened I, is there someone else there? I felt alone for so long, but now it feels like there's someone else here. Hello? Hello? And it's, you hear the echo of this voice slowly fade away. And then you don't hear the voice anymore. But you look down and you see a uh, familiar sight. You see shards of broken mirrors at your feet. And you find yourself in the same place where you were in uh, your last dream that you had last day. Because you, you sleep during the day because we're vampires. Uh, so you're back in a black void. You're walking along a path made by broken mirror shards. And you follow them up a little hill to the full-length mirror floating a little bit off the ground that you saw before that has your mute reflection already standing in it, waiting for you, even before you approach it. Reviewing your notes. I, uh, yeah, I, I was that is trying thick to see with notes. what I had said, uh, what I had asked previously and i know why the glass is broken oh, uh, oh i remember <laughs> um so so yes, again this is and I, I punched it <laughs> it's a it's a full length it's a full length mirror and it is the only mirror that isn't broken in this this whole realm um it has like silver ornamental uh frame stuff all around it uh, including what uh what look like question marks in the corners and your reflection is standing in it and uh last time you encountered it it never opened its mouth and it seemed to be waiting for you to do something and you spoke to it a bunch and it gave you a lot of like confused and kind of disapproving really? looks <laughs> and f when you asked can i go in the mirror Mm -hmm. It's, I, I think that's what you asked. Uh, it mm -hmm. shook its head no, and then the whole world sort of vibrated, and you fell out of the stream and you woke up. Mm -hmm. And you now find yourself back in front of this weird, kind of independent from you reflection uh, in the mirror. 
Okay, so um, <laughs> um, from from the last time I came here, um, my reflection. Let's see here, I, I I was I was pretty rough, so I think I want to just approach and I want to put the hand on the mirror and see or see if it uh, if it does the same. It's uh, it it is like half a second behind you like it basically does the same thing like you would expect a reflection to but like off just enough that it's like a little unsettling the, and i just feel the mirror there's there's no like <laughs> it does not feel like a portal or anything like that no <laughs> in fact if it were a portal then your reflection stopping you at at the threshold of it would keep you from the... <laughs> Um, I want to try to walk to the other side of the mirror, just to a lap. Can I go around it? Um, yeah, you can do that. And on the other side of the mirror, you see the same thing. You see your reflection. Oh. And that reflection is looking at you kind of expectantly. I ask, um, what do I do now? It gives you sort of a confused kind of discouraging look kind of like okay um i say um i don't know what happens next it really slowly points to one of the corners of the mirror okay and then returns um, back to mirroring you Okay, I, I look at the corner of the mirror. Well, that's where one of the question marks is. Well, <laughs> messy. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, I touched the question mark. I, I have nothing on me. I don't really know what else to do. Touching it uh, does not do anything special. <laughs> if you want to, you could give me... Uh, an in, a flat intelligence roll to have a sudden burst of insight, if you wish. Oh. Gonna do that? Yeah. That will be four dice for you. Okay. Two successes. Okay. Oh, two, yeah. So you conclude that this, mm -hmm. this mirror is for asking questions. It is... That's its, oh, I, its whole deal. You are supposed to ask <laughs> questions. And with oh, that... Well, that answer my questions. With that second success, you notice an unusual thing where when, when you talk to it and when you ask it questions, uh, it is more or less like mirroring your movements, but it never opens its mouth. And when it responds mm -hmm. to your questions... It also never opens its mouth. Um, it's fair to assume that it can't answer you verbally, but last time it did answer you by shaking its head no. Okay. <laughs> so it seems to be capable of answering yes or no questions. Okay. Wasn't answering my questions because I was not asking yes or no. Um, I don't even know what to ask it. I don't know. No. Um, I do have to ask it about the four horsemen. Let's see. I wonder if the other players also have ideas of what what they would like to ask in this situation. <laughs> I don't know. Really down a wet tit rabbit hole here, so. <laughs> oh god damn it that's what that is yeah it is. it's one wet tit so you did a, an image search for wet tit and you actually found a bird <laughs> wet tit bird was my was my search uh, string mm -hmm. and it was actually pretty uh, safe for work okay. I had uh, fewer results my search terms were not as refined mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah I got a lot of blue-footed boobies. Mm. There we go. I was trying to figure out a way to work 
like a, a booby joke in. Yeah, we had to. Right? <laughs> uh, it's just too easy to do ornithology humor. Well, I I have ideas for Excavo, but I think it is super unfair <laughs> for me to intervene. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know I don't know what I would. It. I mean, I guess try I'd giving ask, but... yourself a hug in the mirror. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a symbol. Like it's a... a symbol of your own self acceptance. Would you like a suggestion? Because, like, I don't know what it would even know. This is questions about anything. Well, you could ask it. A question that will reveal <laughs> well, like, the extent of what it knows. Like, do you know I, about... Do you know everything? I don't know. Um, that could be your question. I mean, I guess I would... I mean, I guess I'd have been thinking about, you know, like, the four horsemen stuff. Maybe I'd ask it, like, are the four horsemen real? Like, is all of this really happening? Like, with, all, with the, them being, like, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, is that correct? That is your question? I think so. Your reflection in the mirror nods and the universe vibrates and you fall through the glass at your feet and land hard in your bed with new superficial cuts on your arms and legs. Okay. It's like, well, yep, this is really happening. The four horsemen are real. <laughs> Four horsemen are real, and something very interesting appears to mm. happen every time you dream as well. Well, three horsemen of the apocalypse, let's be real. <laughs> uh, Augustine, uh, you, you have a nightmare, of course. You find yourself in a strange, disembodied state. You focus your gaze and... To your horror, it arrives at a large, bloody object a few feet away. It's the mutilated body of Augustine. You're moved against your will, and you see the horrifying face of pestilence move inches from you, studying you. When you try to recoil, you bump against something, and you realize you are trapped within a small glass vial hanging from a necklace. Pestilence wraps a large hand around the vial and with its thumb breaks the top off of it, chilling you with a sudden cold draft. You're then turned upside down as your glass prison is inverted above the open mouth of your ghastly captor. Your tiny, limbless form slowly slides down the side of the glass and falls into a cavernous, fanged mouth where you're quickly enveloped in all-consuming darkness. After an eternity of silence and blackness, you hear what sounds like a muffled song. You slowly drift in the direction of the sound, and the shadows give way to an old lantern lighting a small, elderly woman in a ragged shawl who's grinding something in a mortar and singing what sounds like a lullaby in German. She turns around to face you and smiles. Eh. Good abend. And greetings to you as well, comrade. Uh, is English in your repertoire? Oh, yes. I've learned English, and I haven't figured out what, what my voice is. It's almost on you, Jack. I shouldn't reuse that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might inquire <laughs> to where we are and what it is exactly that you are doing. Well, I'm preparing some of my uh, some of my potions, and uh, you you are in my world now. Everyone eventually is. Illuminating. I am something of an alchemist of my own right. What is it that your potions seek to accomplish, friend? I let the potion decide what it seeks to accomplish. I don't try to exert too much control over things. I just, I prefer to let things spread on their own and feast and consume. 
No sense in trying to uh, control everything. Feels unnatural. That's not ominous at all. At the point that we're talking, like, what's my proximity to her? Uh, you are on the other side of a small room, but you're also in a weird kind of dimensionless dream state. So uh, you're in like comfortable conversation distance. And she keeps kind of like turning her back to you a little bit to like grab stuff and toss it in the mortar and like a little pinch of this, a little sprig of that, grinding it up. She's, but she's turning back to you to like respond. Might I interest you in a collaboration of sorts? I too would enjoy letting nature take its course and allowing it to explore its own dimensions. Might I uh, observe your concoction as it is presently? Collaboration is an interesting word, but you know, we're already collaborating. You're already helping me. Because you're part and of this now. We're using your strength. You are part of us. And you're going to help us consume everything. That sounds like a mutual victory. Might I observe your artistic concoction within your pestle, please? May I? May I? Oh, yes, absolutely. And she suddenly blows the contents of the mortar uh, into your face. And then (laughs) her (laughs) her hand snaps and she suddenly points at you with two fingers and a wide-eyed expression. Your vision becomes unfocused and you find yourself unable to move. She says to you, they tried to hang me from a rope but their minds were soft and easy to fool. I made them think that they had to send me to starve in the swamp, or else my ghost would haunt the village. Other men came to kill me, and I made them think that they did. A creature came to the swamp to take my blood, and I took its body. Now I am the swamp. I take and feed and grow, and I will never die. I will enjoy slowly eating you for the next hundred years. And with that, she shoves you back into darkness. But instead of falling into a black void, you tumble into a crowd of hundreds of other glowing, wispy souls, all trapped just like you. And among them, you see Excavo, Archibald, and Darby. Thurgood. And, and the bear. Thurgood. Thur- Thurgood, Thurgood's actually not there. Oh, you've, you've, the yet, you've yet to form an emotional <laughs> attachment to Thurgood, so he doesn't appear in your dreams. <laughs> the elves just keep on That's coming. What <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think. They're in love. <laughs> uh, okay, so you have emerged from your nightmare, but have you emerged unscathed? Go ahead and... I always emerge unscathed. We're going to need a willpower roll from you at difficulty of seven to determine how traumatized you are. That is six dice. Zero out of ten, I would not take this flaw again. This this is terrible. Uh, It's it's rough. (laughs) At difficulty seven. For one point, like, come on, man. That is not what I meant to do. Mm, all right. <laughs> we need five more dice. Oh, well, God <laughs> no, damn it. No success for the first one. I'm going to be so super good. Come on. I didn't kick any babies this week. Let's go. I see some successes. There I go. go. You finally, finally. Hey. Look at them all. Perfect, perfect Look score. Look at that. All right, you do not lose a die on all rules tonight. Uh, You've successfully emotionally processed this. Uh, However, Mm -hmm. do you... You have uh, an aggravated wound. You have a missing eye. Uh, Am I right to assume that you are going to regrow that? Uh, The eye is also providing... 
a negative one to rolls. It's not a negative one to dice, correct? It increases the difficulty of perception-based rolls. They require, like, depth perception. <sighs> I whisper a mournful goodbye to my favorite uh, gold prospector's eye replacement. You can and, still uh, wear something over your eye if it's just, if you think it's fetching. You still have the it, eye patch. It, it's it's so handsome and so dashing. But yeah, I grow my eye back. And when I wake up, mm. I'll be at nine blood. Yep, that's right. And everyone else ball. is down one blood. I think that is all of our standard things. Uh, when you wake up, uh, Excavo, Augustine, and Archibald all have voicemails on their phones. Who checks their okay. phone first? Actually, who wakes uh, up first like is determined be... by your 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 humanity. Yeah, so. who wakes up because my character would immediately check their phone first. Thurgood's got six, six humanity. Uh, Archibald humanity. would get up first, and then Excavo and Augustine would get up at okay. the same time. Archibald. Even uh, yeah, even then I would check. You get a. Well, a voicemail from uh, Feather McKenna and you listen to it and she says, hi, Mr. Prince. Uh, like I was wondering if you found river, uh, you know, the, the gangrel guy, the, who's my, my master. Um, Cause he, he, I know we talked about it like a few days ago. He still hasn't responded to my messages and, uh, Oh, uh, main thing. I, I just found uh, a spare key to his house that he gave me. And um, if you wanted to, like, check his house, I, I, could, I can give you a key and, like, drop it off with you. And that's, that's the whole thing. Bye! Boop. Cool. I would text her back and say, we will, we, we're still looking to. We'll grab the key. All right. Uh, Excavo receives a voicemail from Abraham Branson of Nuker Technologies. <clears throat> and he says, Hi, uh, this is Abraham at Nuker Tech. Your vehicle's all fixed up and parked outside of our building. Uh, of course, if you would like it delivered to you, just text me the address and we'll, we'll have it taken care of. Uh, and again, thank you for being so understanding and sorry again for our robot, uh, trying to murder your Escalade. Uh, we we will be in touch if we need your services again. Okay, bye. And uh, Augustine. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't trust that. I would be like, we need to pick it up. <laughs> what, you can I don't give them like a neutral them. address too. You don't have to send them right to Darby Manor. Something close by. We'll know our address. <laughs> and Augustine receives a voicemail from uh, Patty Buckmaster. And he says, Ahoy, Augustine! Captain Patty Buckmaster here! I'm eager to hear you report about how that house cleaning job turned out. Send up a flare when it's finished, and I'll have the deed to your new gun store waiting for you. <laughs> then he hangs up. <laughs> Like, ahoy. I can't tell. Like that—that's normal human behavior, right? That's like, that's like, <laughs> yeah. like how people talk to each other. A Augustine right? might yeah. think that, yeah. <laughs> you, it doesn't register as odd to you at all. No. <laughs> oh my god. Where's Thurgood? How's he doing? <clears throat> I I I I think Thurgood is like always kind of like narrating his life and he has <laughs> you would pretend there's like a little camera somewhere yeah and he has experienced just like one of the like strangest and most confusing days and he was kind of like riding a high after hunting like he he understood that you know like the the predator and the prey really really sort of spoke to him on some fundamental level uh but as soon as as soon as we got back he, he's used to being treating a, treated as like a posh academic and not sleeping in the mullet of a car and out in the field. Um, so he's just, he's just like, 
And look how far the famous naturalist has fallen, sleeping in a car in a garage with people who are mystical vampire creatures, and he's almost murdered three other humans. Um, he's having a very bad fucking day. I, I want to say that Thurgood can absolutely, he has the power to turn to the camera and address it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, 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 yeah. That dim office space. You just you just know where the camera is. And you... <laughs> we, we've become uh, even more like what we do in the shadows now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Augustine, Vincent's after... Dead. Unless anyone's got objections, Augustine, after making sure his bear cub is secure and fed uh, to the max, um, bursts into the garage... Uh, being oddly chummy for how Augustine can be to third good. My good man, a new night is upon us, and as a new compatriot to this town, uh, it only seems fitting that I should <clears throat> provide you a luxurious demonstration of the geography our town has to offer you and your escapades. Might you accompany me as I provide you a tour of... The illustrious new Kamak. That's more like it. Yes, yes, of course. I'm finally getting the appropriate welcome that I was expecting. Thank you very much, good sir. Okay, uh, I would now walk in with my normal apron. I have a tray <laughs> of blood, a tray of glasses of blood. I say, good morning, sunshines. Oh, okay. is, is it blood or is it blood nade? Blood nade. <laughs> Augustine, before you go on your special tour with our special new friend, I do have one little favor to ask. You see, your little girlfriend, Feather McKenna, you remember her? She has a special key. Do you remember River, the gangrel with the all the houses and the weird stuff that we were looking at with the summoning circles and all that stuff we were doing yesterday? I'm sorry, uh, the She's got the key to his house, and you need to go pick that up. I thought that since you were already looking at the houses, you might want to go investigate that one. Uh, I'm a little busy with stuff. Let me know when you're going. Maybe I can come with. Typically, the hunters proceed in packs. This time, they're riskily separating their forces. Oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> now, Thurgood, I have I make like, a note to get to some, like, pet your I have stuff to do. I have to write my diary. I have to make sure Onion Jag gets home safe, gets Allie safe. I need to make sure that um, <laughs> I I really want to catch the teenage mutant ninja Catholics up to speed too. I'm I'm a busy prince. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. What was that last one? The, the teenage who? mutant ninja Catholics. <laughs> Oh, oh no. yeah, you weren't there for that. You'll meet them later. Uh, uh, accurate description of a group of people that you've met? I believe they were Leonard O. Mutant is not. Teenage, they're teenage ninja Catholics, yes. That part oh. is accurate. I think I need this tour more than ever. Okay, That's how fun, confusing boys. Confusing business afoot. Um, uh, Archibald, as you uh, tour around the house in your apron, uh, you go to check on Onion Jack, and you see no Onion Jack in the bed, but you see that he has made his bed perfectly. And uh, there's a little note uh, on which uh, he scrawled, got up before any of you, for some reason, confused why you sleep so late, but... Don't want to be in your hair for too long. And I got to get back to my alley to plant these tomatoes in my dirt pile. Uh, and then just like a heart. XXX. Oh, oh, oh. I like sit on the bed and read it. And I'm like kind of tearing up as I am seeing all this. 
And it's and all then, it's all like very casually scrawled, but the signature, the Onion Jack, it's you can see from how the the ink has bled into the the paper more that he tried really hard to yeah. write his name in, in cursive because it meant a lot to him. <laughs> yeah. I I'm like I have some tears running down my face and I <laughs> and I'm just like I'm sitting there in my apron. I've got my blood nade that I'm kind of like quivering and it's kind of spilling over the rim and I'm just like this is the breaking point for me and I just kind of say why does nobody respect me as a leader? I know I don't believe in leaders, but I, I don't know why no one will listen to me. Take me seriously. <laughs> Wait, did you give Onion Jack no instructions man. to stick around, or is this just bringing up unrelated trauma? No, it's just at everyone else, and then Onion Jack being gone and his sweet sentiment, it just like made me feel a lot of feelings, and now everything's just bubbling out. You know how it goes. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm just, everybody's doing important stuff today. I'm just having a cry. <laughs> that could be important to too. let that yeah. out. It's important to feel your feelings. Are they blood tears? They are. Mm -hmm. That's sick. <laughs> Looks very gothy. That's rad, dude. I love that. That's all the prince it's, needed. It's like to every turn it's just a He's... pool of blood from your tears. <laughs> sees himself in a mirror, but can't see his body. He just sees blood tears hanging. He's just like, that's dope. I'm a fucking get this today. And it's just like back to 100%, just happy. <laughs> get back to it. All so Augustine. Right. Augustine was going to bring Thurgood to American Realty Resource to pick up the deed to the, the gun store. Is that right? Am I that? I am that predictable. Yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Uh, does anyone else tag along? Do you invite anyone else to tag along? Just Thurgood. And unless somebody jumps in, um, it is the most mundane tour ever. Uh, 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 observing to our left, there are bottles, and to uh, sorry, right, uh, construction I signs think. that have been around for you years. I love the idea of giving him a tour, and it includes none of the places that we have visited or are important. Bottles. <laughs> you also do, you don't mention the underground like special tunnel network that we have control of. <laughs> Yeah, this particular McDonald's is young. open 24 hours a day. <laughs> oh, yes. Fascinating. Quite, yeah. Uh... <laughs> is anyone else joining on this tour, or is it just the two of you? Archibald, Scavo? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to do my other thing. Can we split up? Okay. Let him go. <laughs> All right. So uh, you take a scenic route to American Realty Resource, which, again, looks like a big pirate ship. Um, and, uh, you park and you're, you're headed in there. It is, uh, night. The sun is just set, but it's already been established that the captain of the company keeps odd hours. So is available whenever, um, as you walk in, uh, in fact, it, it's confirmed that it's still open because you see someone else coming out, uh, at the same time that you're coming in and it's, uh, person with uh like scabs on his face uh he looks uh malnourished and kind of fidgety and nervous and uh his clothes are a little dirty and uh he he walks out on the street and he's kind of glancing around and he walks past you and as as he does walk past you uh thurgood you get just like the slightest tingle like there's something Appealing. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm, pick, yep. I'm picking up exactly what you're putting down. Yep. Uh, um, a meth oh, addict leaves, no. yeah. leaves the and office. And I, th I, think, I think I just start like, is that intoxicating smell? <laughs> Does anyone else smell? It's so, so pleasant and mm, delicious, really. And I'm just like trying to figure, I'm just mostly confused, but um, there's like something in the air that's got me very intrigued. <clears throat> delicious. So the uh, the meth addict runs through traffic and disappears. And 
Uh, you go into the pirate ship building, and Augustine leads you upstairs to Patty Buckmaster's office. And as you do, you see that he's on the phone, but he sees you too, and he, he kind of motions you in to, to sit down at uh, two seats in front of uh, his desk. At any point, did Augustine explain what we were doing? Oh, I just thought not. it was a two. Okay, so I'm uh, just like in this place, like, what, what, what manner of business is this? Uh, uh, you, you are this, this good gentleman <laughs> will be. Uh, he is the captain of this vessel upon which we have boarded, and will be uh, saying words. A, 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 a minor inconvenience, but entirely part of the tour. <clears throat> Does he hear this? <laughs> um, even if that's said right in front of him, he is on the phone and you overhear the conversation <laughs> that he's having. <clears throat> and he says, uh, what? With heightened senses, can I hear both sides of the conversation? Uh, we'll we'll Ooh. see. I only wrote one side of the conversation, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, so you hear Patty... We'll have you fill in the blanks. <laughs> You have Patty, you hear Patty very loudly say, let me be clear, friend. You're going to give us that one million dollar property of yours for a hundred K. I'm glad you asked because your next door neighbor, whom you haven't even met, is about to get divorced any day now. And he's bound to relapse and start cooking meth again. And he's sloppy, so he'll definitely get caught. And since you share a floodplain with him, both of your properties will be condemned as brownfields and will have to have their soil decontaminated before you'll be able to sell. And between that and the damage to the neighborhood's reputation, you won't be able to sell this house for more than 100000 within five years. And because of your wife's recent diagnosis... I know you need to sell and move to Tampa in the next six months. And none of the other interested parties are going to be following up on this property. Oh, why? Because I sold them all houses this morning. So take the deal now so your wife can be with her family in her last days. Or we walk now and she dies in Indiana. So what's it going to be? And you hear... You hear just just mumbling on the other side, of, emotional mumbling on the other side of the phone. And Patty says, I can't understand you when you're crying, dickhead. And there's a long pause wow. and then some response of the tone of resignation. And Patty says, OK, good. Get your ass to my office and sign the paperwork tomorrow. And he hangs it up. And he, he looks at... One of the things I deeply miss was when we played this game before, I got to be the pirate guy. And <laughs> yes, it was yes. My very, very favorite Aww. part of uh, of helping with Graham's game. There was there was another character that you haven't met yet that I also got to do that was a lot of fun as well. But um I'm 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 having some FOMO. Uh oh, was that Maladroit? <laughs> no, um it was the head of the Tobato gang. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, Patty looks up the two of you and uh, probably an expression of some sort of shock. And he, uh, he he puts the phone down. He says, hear this. You know that asshole's wife with the cancer? I golf with her oncologist. All fake. They paid him off to fake a diagnosis. And they've been doing charity fundraisers ever since so they could raise money to move in with her family in Florida, even though they're already rich. It's a con. She's probably going to change her name and do it again. They've probably done it before. I figured the only thing I could do to fuck them over is make sure their house sells for... For ninety percent below market value. <laughs> anyway, what can I do for the two of you? My good man, it seems all above board to me. I have no qualms about <clears throat> other people's. Everything's uh, great here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about about the tr transfer of the gun store. Oh, is, yes. that, is that a euphemism for something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'm afraid not. This gentleman here has purchased uh, a gun store and all of its contents. And uh, I, I would like for him to know that I appreciate very much uh, what he, the favor that he has done for me to help expedite this paperwork, which is, is finished. And he, he slides uh, the, the deed to the gun store over to you across, from, uh, uh, across his desk. Thurgood immediately assumes there's like a sex thing going on between them. He's like, the mating rituals of these vampire creatures are quite strange to deal with. Uh, Patty has kind of a sexually aggressive vibe to him. So that wouldn't be like, like more eye contact than you usually get out of the dude. So that, that isn't misplaced. Uh, and he says, well, I, I hope that you appreciate your new gun store, friend. It's my understanding that it's the only one in the city. So I'm sure business will be quite good for you. And, um, if you would like to be owed a personal favor from me. Uh, I do have yet another tricky task for a, a man of your resourcefulness, if you're interested. While resourceful though I may be, I do indeed have other plans for this very evening, and maybe many evenings to come. For the sake of intrigue, what, what deeds... Do you require oh, uh, that I might better speak to them? It's uh, it's it's cleaning up a house again that we've had trouble selling. It, not unlike what you've already done. See, we have a, a nice big property on Mockingbird Lane that we've been trying to sell, and we haven't been able to because everyone who's toured the house has said that it's. Haunted. Actually, the original owners moved out over a year ago because they said that the place was haunted. And since ghosts fucking aren't real, that means that uh, I assume that there are some pranksters or perhaps homeless folk who need to be just run out of there. Something that I, I don't have the, the time or the interest to do. I just so happen to have a homeless man on our side of this conflict, and I slide him a paper with Onion Jack's phone number. Um, Does Onion Jack have a phone? I'm not sure that... I think we established that he did have a phone. Okay, we yeah. Did. He, uh... Yeah. I feel like Archie's probably paying the, the bill. <laughs> Onion Jack, I don't know if I described it before, but I want to describe it as, like one of the absolute first model cell phones that still has like an antenna you have to pull out that just is a still chugging phone. along. It has like wait, bite wait, wait. marks on can it. Can we say, can we say instead that he has a rotary phone that somehow works wirelessly? How do you get X? <laughs> does it read it? <laughs> like still does this number with it. Yeah. Yes. I, I think at this point, uh, Blake, you are in charge of canonical uh, Onion Jack stuff <laughs> okay. because every. What do, guys, what do you guys like that like more? That or just in his or... alley, he has just on the wall of the alley is one of those very old phones where you have a separate mouth. So it's like full of that 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 you have to hold up. <laughs> The Andy Griffith phone. And like somehow the weird old numbers work. Like you call them by dialing Indiana fifty two hundred, and somehow that is exactly what brings. Yeah, That's the number. definitely, definitely on on board with that one. Like who's paying for this? He gives you a five digit number, and somehow it, it yeah. works when you call it. Oh yeah, he's just more important than we than he lets on. There's something going on there. Uh, okay. So, so, uh, Patty Buckmaster, uh, takes this piece of paper. He sees Onion Jack and then the phone number and he says, well, okay, I, I can pass this opportunity along to, to this gentleman. And then I suppose he would be owed a favor. Uh, I, I'm new in town. So I, I No, the guy on the, are you Onion Jack? The guy, the guy in the oh, the paper, no. the phone number. I will, I will call this person <laughs> and and see if he can, uh, if he can bust some ghosts for us. Who are you gonna call? 
you apparently let onion jack hands go alone into a ghost hunting mission no Don't no no not, not at all i i'm just you know i hope he's totally fine him. i hope nothing bad happens to him at all that'd be that'd be my favorite thing i think some little darby's slipping out there if you ask me <laughs> It's just some just metagame. That's Steve. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Hold so, on now, Steve. Patty opens the drawer and pulls out. Uh, he he pulls out another one of those keys with like a little tag on it with an address written, and he takes it and he pairs it up with the note with Onion Jack's uh, phone number, and he places them down on his desk, and he says, "Well, if there's uh, nothing else that you need from me, I." Uh, Bye. The keys to my establishment, if you would. Oh, yes. You, you would be wanting those. Um, <laughs> here you go. I forgot and about all that. The, and all of the spares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It just seemed like a guy who would have kept a few spares. <laughs> uh, now, uh, are you sure that you don't want someone else to hang on to a spare in case you lose all of yours. Absolutely certain. He pulls out just a big key ring, just full of identical <laughs> keys, and he drops it down on the desk. <laughs> Here you go. And I, and I do greatly appreciate the assistance in this matter. I will keep the cleanup discreet as per our uh, unspoken arrangement. Wink. And I grab Paddington and my big-ass thing of key rings and the deed to my thingy-do, and uh, I leave and uh, hope Thurgood's following. <laughs> I, I'm i just blindly following. I, I, can't, I don't understand why we were there, and I... It's like, this is the worst tour ever. So the only actual establishment that you've pointed out so far is this... Realtor? This, this <laughs> class. Um, the interest is not in the inhabitant, but have you ever seen a, 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 a pirate ship in land so far? Is that not intriguing? Ooh. And I open the car and I get in. <laughs> it's just blind, blind. Just get in the car. It's like, <laughs> what is happening to my life? Um, Augustine is also obligated to spend one hour uh, teaching Elizabeth uh, the green path. Does he run off and do that now while we are uh, switching over to Excavo and Archibald? Yeah, but I don't drop Thurgood off. Uh, <laughs> Just leave him in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I drive to a nearby park. Um, throw it in park, take the key with me, um... <laughs> wait, 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 you didn't roll any of the windows down. <laughs> I leave the windows cracked, I take my bear cub with me, uh, and I leave Thurgood <laughs> in the car, and I wander in a false direction until I'm out of sight before walking in my actual direction to get to the Chantry. <laughs> So I'm sitting in the car it's by myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, door and get out and walk around. For, for, for whereabouts of an hour. And yeah, I'm sure. Well, has got to know how locks work, right? How is that the cruelest thing any PC has done to than, another? Than Darby. Um, <laughs> I, I I guess I don't know. We can we can role play my version, my half of this scene when we get back to the Sean Tree, and I decide what I do when I realize not coming back for me anytime soon. <laughs> how how long does it take for you to get that impatient as a, as a well mannered fellow? <laughs> like how long Five do you wait? Five hours. <laughs> I, I, I think I start to try to find some way to amuse myself after like 15, 20 minutes. Like I you get could just around the park. <laughs> Crank it once or Party. twice. No, roll for it. I was saying you could roll for it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Just crank out some rolls. Yeah. To see kind of what I get up to. We're on the same page. I was definitely talking about that. 
<laughs> well, let's follow up on that. Uh, let's let's circle back to it. Um, uh, Excavo, uh, there is an Escalade that you can pick up. Do you go do that? By myself? No, I would ask. I uh, I would ask. I would ask Archie to come with me. I don't want to pick it up by myself. Also, if you're driving there and you have a second car yeah, to drive Yeah, that... it's, it's also part of it. That's most of it, actually. <laughs> it's uh, very practical. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you drive up to the uh, the back of Nuker Tech and the mm-hmm. uh, the garage door is uh, is open and you see that, as always, it's... It's night, but they're still doing all their nerd stuff. And you see uh, Bartleby in that exoskeleton uh, trying to uh, t- uh, just stack up like a tall column of boxes to see if, if he can do it without knocking it over. And Candace is on the computer and uh, Abraham sees you park and excitedly runs out to uh, to the sidewalk with uh, the keys to your Escalade. He's like, here it is. Uh, we, we got it. We got cleaned too for you. Just just to, as a, an extra little, little thanks thanks for not calling the cops or suing us or getting litigious or anything. So here you go. And he hands the keys to Excavo. I don't, I don't, I literally don't say anything. I just turn around and start walking towards Escalade. <laughs> he says, okay, well, all, uh, it's, uh, it's nice. Nice seeing you again. And uh, if if you if you need anything from us, or if we need anything from you, and I guess he just kind of trails off like as already. you get you get in, and you, <laughs> he's he's trying to establish some sort of like friendship thing, and you're, <laughs> no. you're like nope, nope, <laughs> coldly logical. <laughs> So, I am still standing there awkwardly to the side, and I say thank you very much for the vehicles. Are you going to hang back and talk to them? Thank you for the vehicles, and then I, like, oh, then I, go, I go away. I'm already driving away. Well, now we have two cars, right? So I have to take yeah. the other one. Yeah, we each have our own. All right. You're like already out of the parking lot, and I'm still just standing there. And I see you guys later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you drive off in what was one of their cars before it got <laughs> negotiated out of their hands. Wait, actually, can I ask them something? Sure. And I think I would have had this with me to study on the way over anyway, because I've been looking at it pretty obsessively. Uh, I want to ask them in all their computerness. say, hey, you guys like computers, right? Oh, we love computers. Well, it's like our main as, thing. As they're surrounded by like an IBM room. Uh, <laughs> do you guys know anything about good chess engines? Chess engine? Like algorithms for for uh, for AI? Uh, uh, like for, chess bots? For analyzing games or anything like that? Oh, analyzing games? Uh, you know, I, I play chess myself, but I've uh, I've not done a lot of, like, I, I haven't gotten into the computer chess stuff. I, I prefer my chess to be unadulterated by technology. Just good old, you know, wood on a board. So oh, I, oh, me too. But do you well, do any analysis? Uh, I, uh, honestly, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed to admit, I, I'm not sure what you mean, but, but what, what's the problem that you're oh, trying to solve, right. sir? Well, I, I'm i about to go up against a fairly tough opponent in a game of chess, and I have one of their past games here. It was a correspondence game they played. And, I mean, I've seen a lot of strengths in their positions and their kind of play style. It's hard to tell from this one game, but I was wondering if I could run the game through a chess engine and analyze it further see if I can learn any weaknesses in their play style. Well, it, it would be interesting to, to look into that. We, we could do a little bit of research for you. I'd be happy to. I'm, I'm curious about that myself. But, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, there, there is a, a sneaky little trick that I've, I've heard of that 
I don't know if it would interest you. It's an unscrupulous chess trick that I, I've heard. Are you about to tell me scholars, mate? I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah. Oh. No, th- this is what I've what I've heard. Um, if someone challenges you to a game online, uh, some some people, some some real chuckleheads, what they do is they they make sure that they they take black so their opponent goes first and then in another window they start a game against a computer with the highest difficulty and they do the same moves that their human opponent is doing and then in their match against the human they respond the same way the computer responds so you can basically play a game of chess with you know, like some grandmaster level algorithm telling you all the moves that you need to do. And if you're doing it online, they, they're not going to know that. It's It seems like a real jerk thing to do, but like that, that's the one trick I've heard of. Well, the most appreciate... unrealistic thing in this game so far is this guy not knowing anything about chess. Like zero, <laughs> zero know, right? percent chance. I, I sent you a message, Graham, the, uh, by the way. I appreciate the help, but I'm not going to need the computer to help me play at a GM level. Thank you very much, Abraham. <laughs> and then I turn away and I get in the car. <laughs> really rev it up before I peel out of there. <laughs> just, just remind just... him that it used to be theirs. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I missed the opportunity to... Or Are these suggestions of chess yes. engines? I sent you a couple of chess engines that this guy would probably know about, but too late. I, uh... Oh yeah, they're, they're super common, actually. I disguised my lack of computer chess stuff knowledge with just like, oh, I just, I, I, I want it to <laughs> be like pure, just, I'm a hipster. It's not, it's not real unless if you can, if you can knock over, if you can grab your opponent's pieces and hide them somewhere. Um, <laughs> do you know how to play chess? <laughs> That's okay. not really. So. How it works. You're allowed to hide them somewhere. After you take them, of course. E- actually, still no. You have to keep your taken pieces next to the board so you can keep track of the score. But that's neither here nor there. Are you allowed to have a pocket full of extra pieces mm-hmm. to put also alongside the board to further demoralize your opponent? Definitely not. It's like, I, like I have like 15 of your pawns. It's crazy. <laughs> 10 queens. Oh, you are fucked. I took all I seven of your queens. Someday I want to find out if it is mathematically possible with any combination of moves to get the nine queens. The to turn all the pawns. Queens. I think it would automatically be a checkmate in any position before that. Is it impossible to turn all of your pawns into queens? Theoretically, if you got them each across the board, you could promote them each into queens, but I don't think there's any combination of moves that would allow for that to happen. Huh. Yeah, it's nearly like, every open combination happen. of pieces <laughs> result, uh, ha- like one pawn takes another, like there's almost no way to pr- proceed There'd that. Be no like, way to get them all. The 15th move, because you'd have to take ready. all opposing pawns. You you could do it only if you were so far ahead you were just like mm-hmm. fucking with someone. Like if, Even both, yeah. if both players are cooperating to try to get yeah. that yeah <laughs> even even yeah. still like it would be very challenging i think yeah at that point it would just be like a puzzle instead of right. a, a game anyway that's chess okay so i like uh, how my, i'm making my character bank so much in this chess game it's probably just going to end up being <laughs> no, like a blip on the radar but <laughs> I don't want to uh, lose my soul in a bad chess game. Well, you and Excavo return back to... Uh, oh, I want to go to the Catholic Church to uh, do a conversion. What? Okay. You... And by that, I mean I would like to fill in the father on the fact that we've defeated one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So that seems important. Oh. Oh, he wouldn't know. Because right. he doesn't know that yet, and I think it's really yeah. important that like we keep our uh, our team Ooh, in form yeah. there. Okay, so not used to working with them. In the uh, Lamborghini, I believe. 
Um, you go to uh, St. Michael the Archangel Church, where you met Father Francisco Palladian uh, the previous night. And uh, it, it looks like it's all empty and unoccupied. Uh, but you go to the, the front door where you had that really dramatic meeting with him and you knock on it and you hear some sort of noise inside and uh, you knock on it again and you hear footsteps approaching and uh, the door opens and uh, Palladian student Leonard pokes his head out and he sees you. I'm just now remembering that before we said that you couldn't approach close enough. Yeah, to I was gonna the... say I was gonna say that I like would be outside across the street. Part, yeah, I'm gonna and then I'm gonna I hop like, back. Call, I would call and be like, "Hey, come out and talk to me." There are also pebbles at your feet that are, and the door is in throwing distance. <laughs> Okay, I yeah, I don't know if we got their numbers or anything, do we? Is that the more romantic we option? We got their phone oh. numbers. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you got yeah, we at did. least like oh, Leonard's number. Yeah, I think I would have just like called on the way over and like, hey, I'm coming to talk to the father. Uh, I think we we spend a lot of time just trying to sort out exactly how communication happens and exactly how transportation happens. Uh, maybe we should gloss over some of that stuff. Or yeah, so uh, so Here. Leonard is. Uh, there and it's like, hi, we're here now. How? Hello. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, big update, father. Uh, we beat. I am not. One. I'm not oh, a, a oh, priest, that, but uh, Leonard, could I tr uh, transition this conversation into a conversation with your dad? <laughs> if. By that, you mean Father Palladian. Um, your father or your dad, I don't really see the difference. Oh what, is, <laughs> what is it that you wish to tell him? That's for the grown-ups to know, Leonardo. <laughs> he rolls his eyes and he turns around and he goes and fetches uh, Father Palladian. It takes, it's like a full five minutes that you're waiting, but... Uh, Wonder what that's like. <laughs> Not as long as Thurgood. <laughs> the the front door opens up once again and Leonard steps out and still inside the doorway you see the familiar sight of the fully covered robe hood uh, Francisco Palladian and he says yes hi pop we got one I'm just now remembering his voice yes you got you got one what Oh, one pestilence. The horseman. Yeah, Pest we got you, it. You found or captured? Hit, or killed. Utterly destroyed. Well, why do you think that you've... Uh, do you have a body? Or? There's not one it's, left. I uh, I believe it's still in the trunk of the vehicle that you drove. Oh no, we we uh, wheelbarrowed the goo and and gave it to uh, the laboratory. We've got the remains being stu what's left of the remains is being studied at our laboratory. Oh, okay. Did we yeah. get a trophy? I thought we got some kind of trophy because we knew we were going to have to prove it to these guys that we killed them. We gave Here's... it to the Tremere. We gave a bunch of goop. Here's what and I retroactively I should have taken a small container of it to give to these guys too. I I think that I, I'm gonna say that I do remember that you like back the wheelbarrow up to the back of the car and then you lifted the whole car to empty the, the goop yeah. into the the wheelbarrow. Um, we're gonna say okay. that the wheelbarrow like half of it got into the wheelbarrow and you remembered to keep the other half in the trunk because Palladian mentioned. Something about we would like to see evidence if if you can in fact kill any of these fiends. Is that in this car? Let's not worry about it. Let's say I have. I, be I believe that is the same car. I, yeah. give, I give them the goop. Father Palladian, do you? How do you do that? <laughs> you just, just like hit hit the button. One hand, pull at a time. <laughs> I, you, 
I, I suggest you hit the, have... the trunk button and it just up, up. opens up and it's just like cartoon, like flies buzzing and stink lines. Stink. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and see for yourself. Dad? Leonard uh, walks down the steps and still like kind of side-eyeing you as he walks past you, walks up to the car and... Uh, and looks inside and is uh, it's hard for him to be in proximity to this pile of pestilence. But he rolls up his sleeves and he reaches in and he's... Oh, you Leo, know all, if you oh. want a sample, I have this and I hold out a sippy cup that I for, have. That he, I always have. He... <laughs> He looks over at you and he just ignores that. And he's making all the same sounds that you hear when you're like gutting a pumpkin. Just those like hollow, kind of slurpy, gross, wet gunk sounds. And with a long That's kind my, of... My favorite, my favorite Beach Boys album is Wet Sounds, by the way. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but with like a <laughs> he removes one big solid part and he turns around and it is Pestilence's decaying head and he kind of whips it around in his in his hands and uh, facing toward the church he holds it up to Palladian and Palladian says, My lord, it is the same creature that I saw in Jerusalem. It appears that you have, in fact, slayed the horseman pestilence. Well, it appears that your alliance on the side of good has, has been proven. Well, good, I don't know, but we're in it to win it. Well, this is quite encouraging. I, I would love to anyway. tell you where, where the other three horsemen are so that you can make short work huh? of them, but we only recently no. found out that they've arrived in this city, so uh, we, we've yet so we to have collect... no leads at all. I'm afraid not, but we are working on it, and we expect you to do the same. Uh-huh. Do you like chess? Honestly, I've always been more of a, a checkers person, but I, I do play chess. <laughs> not, like, not your dad. Hey, Palladian. Oh, you've been talking to Palladian. Oh, do you want to, like... So I'm about to play, like... Palladian has the raspy voice, because he's old. We, I, I take out, like, the, the correspondence chess game. I'm like, this is her. This is the bad, the bad guy. This is Fariga. I'm about to play her. We do have a lead on one of them. She's coming uh, to my nightclub, which I'm converting into a chess bar. <laughs> uh, Leonard takes those papers from you and passes them up to uh, uh, Palladian at the top of the I stairs. I like to imagine that they are all outside and they just do it um, like assembly line style, mm. passing them up one after the other. Palladian seems to not want to leave the church. Um, yeah. So that, that's kind of the deal. So uh, you see him looking at the papers and he says, I, these are, these are chess moves. I, and they came from Farika. Yes. I, I don't. This is the method with which she reduced the former prince to a mere shadow of himself. My God. Well, it is impressive that you've determined this. Well, um, do you see where uh, she initialed F? That's how we know. And she signed each of, the, each of these letters with a stamp. A black horse, which is the color of the horse that famine rode upon in the bible i've never read it to be honest actually i feel like that's a lie i feel like 
being like an academic, I totally would have read the Bible at some point. But it's been a while since I've read it. <laughs> if if she has powers such as this that she could exercise through a, a chess game, then I suppose you and I should count ourselves lucky that we won't be playing chess with her anytime soon. Well, no, like I just said, um, I'm going to play her this weekend. I invited her over to my bar to play, to play a game of chess. And I'd really like to win so that I don't also lose my soul. You've extended an invitation to her to meet you. Uh, when, when will this take yeah. place? Like on Saturday, I think. And where is your chess bar? Club Wonderland. Oh, oh yes. We it's discussed going it to be before. called Club Wonder Chess soon. Once we get the new signage and everything. I'm sure that will go over great. <laughs> well, you know what I've noticed is not too many big chess fans here in Newcomac so far, based on my increase. Abraham it's was it's Abraham was super down. into it. Abraham just didn't do Abraham like the computer. Abraham doesn't thing. know what Abraham doesn't know what Scholar's Mate is. So no, Abraham is not into it. I don't ultimate, know what Scholar's Mate ultimate is. Ultimate chess shade. It's like the two move trick checkmate it's like the first thing you learn oh huh okay there you go i'll have to learn um, it so so famine does it there you go <laughs> she'll do it just checkmate me immediately damn um, it <laughs> oh, dang, oh dip anyway so yeah we, well we are bringing her to club wonder chess wonderland and i'll be playing her on saturday that's the intention of course I have kind of considered the other option, which is the chess match could be more of a, not a chess match, more of a death match. <laughs> so I will be bringing my hammer as well. Do you think we should set like a trap? It seems like it go goes against the honor of the game. I would suggest setting a trap, yes. Though... I suppose it's fair to assume that she might already be setting a trap for you. Oh, I didn't consider. Do you think like, I mean, you know more about her than I do. Do you think she seems like the kind of person who would set like a trap? Like well, someone really into chess <laughs> might do or... I'm sorry. <laughs> That's true. There are a lot of traps in chess. And also, she set a trap by playing the dude in chess to begin with. <laughs> well, I can't claim... The honor of the game. <laughs> I can't honor. claim to know what's on her mind or in her heart, but I, I do know that creatures such as yourselves who manage to live for a long time, do so by being mm. careful and cunning. So I, I would not put it past her. I mean, the fact that it's really hard for us to die, I think is also a big factor. It seems like you're letting a little bit of your own prejudice kind of slip in there, but we're going to let this one slide, Palladian. If I were you, I would be careful. I would do everything in my power to destroy her before losing sight of her that night. And the only other possible concern is she could have valuable information that you might need to get out of her, especially concerning the whereabouts of the horsemen war and death. Uh, so... We are big fans of interrogation. They uh, Interrogations uh, sometimes give you very useful tactical knowledge, if you have reason to believe that that, in the veracity of that information. Um, would you, would you all, your lot, I know that uh, Club Wonderland doesn't exactly have its hold in the, the Catholic market, but uh, would you all like to, maybe help get on it seems like a great opportunity to you know uh get one of the horsemen 
Oh, I thought it went without saying that we would be there too. Oh, my, great, good, yeah. Probably You're all myself, invited. definitely my my students. There is. It is fifty percent off drinks on Saturdays, so. Uh, we we will uh, in, investigate uh, your your menu of mocktails, I believe. Look, your Catholics can drink. Uh, but I've seen not... it in movies. They have wine every Sunday. We prefer <laughs> not to on on the eve of a battle. Oh, totally. Also, I gotta say, fifty percent off on Saturdays. Yeah, that's not a, uh, not a great. <laughs> you're losing money bad, there. Bad, bad businessman. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! We're really poor stuff. That's what we do on like a Tuesday. <laughs> you're gonna have, have a shortage. You're gonna run that... out of alcohol. Who would have thought? As a bartender, I want to I wanna imagine that mocktails are just. Normal cocktails where the bartender whispers snarky words into them before <laughs> them the patron. First off, That'd be like a bartender. Here's your Shirley off, Temple. As the professed like <laughs> communist theorist of the party, I'm probably not in it for the money. Secondly, it has been actually... established as canon that Benedict and Baraccio had really stupid financial practices and almost ran the business into the ground. So it is possible that Club Wonderland's like famous for half price Saturdays <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, they exactly. they kept it afloat just with their own personal finances yeah, going into yeah. it. And it's only still in business because a mortal uh, <laughs> named Marsha is the new owner or uh, uh, manager and like made the business actually be profitable again. So it would totally be fitting for like there to be a new vampire owner that just runs it straight back into the ground again. I also want to say, what if I meant that 50% off doesn't mean money. 50% off is how much you get of your cocktail. It's just half the amount of cocktail. You only get half a cocktail. <laughs> it's like, it's 50% off tonight. And they order like, what the hell? We're Might I also? <laughs> I'd like to also suggest this is a joke that I was gonna save for a different Club Wonderland situation, but it goes well here. Uh, there's there's a buy one get one uh, deal that is to bring people, and it's literally you buy one, and, and that's how many one? you get. <laughs> you don't you don't buy one and get more than buy one, one get one. <laughs> oh no no it's not buy one get one that's free. just how transactions work <laughs> uh, yeah it, it's not buy one get two that'd be ridiculous <laughs> idiot it's god it's bogo not bogoff we didn't say anything about free <laughs> <laughs> the bartender drinks half of it first before handing it <laughs> it would also be in keeping with all the uh, the Alice in Wonderland theme of like using really tricky wording <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, Graham, cover your ears uh, so you uh, don't know. Or take this. them off. Okay, guys, here's my new plan. Here's what I want to do. It would be really, it would be really cool if in the battle, I, I we win it and I cut her right in half, and I'm just like, it's fifty percent set off Saturdays. <laughs> Now he won't. There. Now since he covered his ears, he won't know. So like we didn't do it. Like it's gonna be even funnier when, when it yeah. happens. Oh, so <laughs> so we're gonna say the, the 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 half off Saturday is canonical. It's a real thing. It is packed. You're drinking half like this. Yeah, it's packed every Saturday now, and <laughs> yeah. uh, and the, the and the manager Marsha is fucking furious with you. <laughs> <laughs> they have no other deals. That's it. <laughs> let's let's say uh, in between previous sessions, you just like called up Club Wonderland, and this was your edict. And that, I've that's got the an thing idea. Now. We got to get more people in there. Build community. It's all about community. 50% off Saturdays. He's manically calling them. <laughs> Normally, we're open uh, 8 to 3. Now, only half that time. We're open midnight to 3. 50% off everything. <laughs> Normally, we let people go up to the second floor. No. To sit. Not today. 
building cut Not in half. Today. It's fifty percent off. There's only <laughs> one story. This is this has been like a full ten minute riff. I know. Half <laughs> off. <laughs> what are we doing? We we cut to Thurgood and just sort of. No, this is it. <laughs> I got a live look at my screen. It's not called <laughs> Club Wonderland that night. It's just Wonderland. It's called. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up. Club off. 50 okay. Cent Land. <laughs> okay, we're done. So, uh, Palladian <laughs> leaves you with assurances that uh, he and his students are going to be present at Club Wonderland on Saturday. And uh, Leonard carries the head of Pestilence right into the church and disappears into the church and uh they bid you adieu and close the door and uh and you you saturday hugs and kisses (laughs) and unless if anyone else wanted to do something quick like uh emerge from the chantry and finally take thurgood back to darby manor uh, I think that's where we're going to call it for tonight's session. I think I will have gone home and I'm going to be like standing in front of the mirror, even though vampires don't have reflections and I'm psyching myself up about the prospect. It, that's a flaw. It's a flaw not to have a uh, reflection. So oh, yeah. I do have it, one. It's a specific solid. flaw. Yeah. Okay. So never mind. So We've been talking all mirror. about Excava's reflection. <laughs> True. But I thought that was like a weird dream. Sequence it's like thing. a dream thing that's, that's fair. that I remembered right. when I was human. Yeah. So I'm like in front of the mirror with my sickle sword, just like <laughs> practicing, like trying to say it cool, but it's all wrong. And like, now you're fifty percent off. <laughs> and I'm, but I'm also doing it with chess, and I'm just like, that is, uh, fifty percent off your checkmate brings your total to three ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, it goes on like that for a few hours of me just trying different <laughs> variations. Um, oh, does does Augustine uh, leave the Chantry and head back to uh, Darby Manor? Um, Are you just going to forget it? N- no, no. I mean, the, the, um, okay, so how did, how did the things go with the Chantry? I assume, like... You spent an hour I- teaching Elizabeth uh, Green Path stuff, and... It uh, was, I, well. was I politely belligerent and snarky in a way that wouldn't alert them to my distaste for their leadership? You were passive aggressive in a way that was indistinguishable from just your unintentional capacity for being annoying. Excellent. Um, cool. Then I take a scenic walk around the neighborhood, uh, extending as much time as I can. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Before casually and silently sauntering back up to the car, and if Thurgood's still there, slapping it menacingly to see if I could get a rise. And so here's what I like to imagine Thurgood did um, during during the time that you you left him there. <laughs> I think that he has befriended a, like a squirrel, like some type of woodland creature, and is just like completely entertaining himself by just interacting with and like playing with feeding this this squirrel um and is startled when you when you bang on the car but is like defensive and protective of the squirrel just like trying to protect uh the creature that he found and just like "Ah, where, where have you been why on earth did you leave me in this car serious apologies good sir uh i do see you have a fuzzy compatriot and I produce a tomato for the squirrel. <laughs> Squirrels eat tomatoes? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know this, and I just hold it out for the squirrel. Uh, that and be if they did. While, <laughs> while waiting for the squirrel to respond, uh, also cradling Paddington in my lap, <laughs> feed Paddington a tomato as if to like demonstrate what the squirrel should be doing. <laughs> Squirrels do, in fact, like tomatoes, so I think he would have taken you up on your on your offer, according to, <laughs> according to Google. Google it, Google is benevolent and never does anything wrong. Um, not ever. 
So there is a I'm lot of support. Leaving. There's a lot of comments about people bitching about the squirrels taking and eating the tomatoes out of their garden. So I think oh. this is probably like a yeah. real thing. Squirrels like tomatoes. <laughs> Uh, so I, I feed the squirrel tomato and go, good God, I might actually like this man. Darby, take notes wherever you are in there. And uh, I start the car and I drive it back to D-Town. Do you... Uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. Uh, I was thinking uh, the Onion Jack, if you talk to Onion Jack about the haunted house thing, but that's something that's going to happen... Uh, off camera that's just between Patty and Onion Jack so never mind about that that would also we never got the key from Feather either uh, true uh, let's leave that for the next session well that could be that could be a quick thing um, uh, do you swing by Camp Moonlight and just pick up that key from Feather without there being a scene about it <laughs> You want to like fast I forward through that? Drove away the escalator. <laughs> it depends. Did you have something important planned that would happen when he went to get the key from a feather? Nope. <laughs> if you if you look like you're in a hurry, feather's like, here's the key. Peace. <laughs> and that's the extent of it. I, I didn't have anything else planned for that. Would Thurgood know how to ghoul a squirrel? Uh, I don't think the concept has been introduced. Two thirds. That not so, something they just could do naturally. <laughs> unless if there's something in Thurgood like that would scent. compel him to feed his own blood to an animal <laughs> without knowing that anything yeah. special would happen, then probably probably not. But I really <laughs> like the idea of having a squirrel companion and uh, just keep that on the back burner. Hey, squirrel, want my ghoul? Uh, Thurgood, uh, before we we leave, give me a manipulation plus. Animal kin roll. That'll be four dice for you. Ooh. All right. Ooh. And not a lot of rolling today, but... Ooh. One success. So you successfully coax that squirrel into the car, and it seems skittish. It seems like it could run away at any moment, but at the moment it is more curious about you and its surroundings then it is scared Afraid. so uh mm. it follows you to uh to darby manor excellent Begr begr begrudgingly like genuinely trying to help thurgood is there any way i can use my animal ken skill to like calm the squirrel and endear I, if, 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 if he wants to help me can he help me with the uh, with this Maybe uh, instead of giving it the tomato directly, I give it to uh, Thurgood to give it to him. I think we are allowed to cooperate on things. Oh, right? yeah. I I would love to see how uh, how Gustin crowds around a squirrel that Thurgood is working with and uses his Augustin voice to calm something down. Uh, but, yeah, give me a manipulation plus animal kin roll that will also be four dice for you. And uh, go ahead and tell me how you intend to calm down a squirrel. <laughs> so he like sees what I'm doing and he is surprising. He's surprised and he's like, oh, wow. He's wow. wow. And then he decides to help me. OK, uh, well, just because, I, you know, I have he already own... explained it. He gave him the tomato. That's like his strategy. He like gave it, okay. gave it some food and tried to calm him down Two successes. Uh, so. Yeah, the, the squirrel obviously sees you as like a food source and not predators now. Uh, seems skittish, but for the moment, you have a squirrel friend. Love it. Love everything. Oh, um, I guess side strategy as uh, with this role is I'm trying to like, I, just like with uh, Batman. I am demonstrating the bear cub as, hey, you have fur, he has fur, I'm not harming him, pet, 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 and hopefully Paddington is, like, digging on that and, like, ah, oh, yes. Yeah, Trying to re reinforce your friendly animal nature to your yeah. ward. Hopefully Paddington's, like, motherfucking scritches, yes. 
And uh, that, like, endears the squirrel to, like, maybe I could get scritches. I'm just, I'm has... just really looking forward to the Darby squirrel interaction, if that ever <laughs> comes around. Oh, um, shit, a rat! Stomp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be something. <laughs> then Thurgood around. comes back and is just devastated. Devastated, yeah. <laughs> well, have Very you Baldur's done? Gate vibes. <laughs> Very, go for the eyes, boo! Go for the eyes. I really gotta. I really gotta practice. I've I'm, I've gone uh, just like far into uh, C three PO and not David Attenborough. So I'm really gonna have to like work on my my voice work for next time. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, that is where we will end tonight's session. Um. Sure. At the end of this one, uh, it seems like everyone is reconvening at. Mm -hmm. Darby Manor. Uh, presumably, Onion Jack is going to be tasked with uh, haunted house cleaning, ghost and busting. <laughs> certainly, he'll be safe. I I know he'll be safe and fine and come out victorious because that's why I sent him there. Uh, Augustine also has the opportunity to uh, do some of his. Uh, very time-consuming Tremere stuff, uh, which he's been given the option to do that in a way that is like accelerated and faster, but he could still spend the rest of the evening doing that. But, 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 so there's uh, potentially checking out River's house if you want to do that. And Augustine is going to get another voicemail that uh, we will go into in the next session. So we're generally writing the rest of the night off as like, when we get to the next episode, we'll talk, we'll disperse, like, they're going to disperse and go investigate River's house. I'm going to uh. do my my brainy expansion do, and then we'll reconvene. But like, I have the next two weeks between now and our next session to figure out how I stretch and damage my brain. Okay? Yeah, the, the next session could be spent just kind of fast forwarding through the day while people uh, do like non scene okay. stuff. It's been a while since we've had a day like that. Seems, seems like we're probably due. Uh, but, and, and then we'll fast forward through that day and then we'll pick up on the next day. If, if that's what we do. Sounds dope. Well, that is the end of session 26. Everyone gets two experience points and Archibald, you're sitting on 10 of those. Do you want to spend any? Do I have enough to do the combo discipline where I can jump real high? That is 12 points. You'll next be able time. to get that uh, <laughs> at the... Watch out, because next week I'm about to jump so high. Okay, uh, Augustine, you also have 12 points. Do you want to spend any of that, or do you want to save it up for... Uh, I mean, some. if I'm doing the, the brain scarring expandy do, I should probably keep some XP for that, right? Like, that's part of the gimmick, is I gotta spend XP to do the expandy do. You have to spend experience points to get new things on your character sheet, for the most part. But not, Lame. not rituals. Rituals are a weird exception to that. Also, backgrounds. You don't spend uh, experience points for anything in the backgrounds category. But it's like anyway. a role play for them. Yeah, they're granted to you if it makes sense that you have them. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold like a real poker player because I want to be a real big uh, brain on this. Let's have a poker night, Andy. I have an interest in not losing all of my money. I so... don't mean with real money, silly. We can bet candy. You mean, I, oh, I don't okay. have an interest candy. in losing all of my candy. I have a couple of Reese's cups and a really nice uh, dark chocolate that is fair trade certified. I, I, don't, I don't have any candy. I strictly have sexual favors. That um, works too. So, Darby McThurgood, um, you have three experience points. You can spend them on your first dot in an ability that you don't currently have or uh, a second dot of an ability or 
what else can he do with three? Not much. I, I don't know if I really earned one today. Um, I was thinking just like etiquette might be like appropriate for a third good, a third good point that Darby would definitely not have. Um, just like very polite English gentleman. So uh, let's do that. I'll go. I'll go with my first dot of et- etiquette. Okay. You definitely, you definitely dealt with the psychotic, sociopathic nature that is Augustine with a great amount of grace. Just confused but polite the whole time while he was just kind of getting shat on by everybody. Yeah, I think he earned some etiquette points tonight. Or took you out of your bed, put you in the bed of an El Camino, took you on a tour that wasn't a tour, it was just me running dirty deed errands. And then but he was just, like, too polite to say too much about it. Just like, oh, well, this this is a this is an interesting tool you've chosen to send me on. Um, thank you. Like the, I'm pretty sure the only nice thing I did was literally try and like feed the help with the squirrel. And, yeah, at the very end. And and I'm gonna be honest. I I think Augustine's endeared to Thurgood. I I hope Thurgood wins. I think he's just our new meth addicted vamp because fuck Darby. Um, I, I know you feel that way. I don't think Thurgood's going to end up addicted to meth. We haven't decided exactly how we're going to play that out yet, but um, he's going to have his own weird thing. Augustine, Augustine never had any reason to dislike either Darby or Thurgood. It's I, I dislike Thurgood because he's a vessel for Darby. Uh, <laughs> right now, Darby lives because... He smells like Darby's person. taint. Yeah. Um, but Darby, you know what? I'll tell you what about Darby. I'll tell you why I hate Darby. He tripped me once. If you if you are coming by us, I think I would I think I would try to trip you. Like I... <laughs> Augustine falls down. You win. I, I I was like fucking with you in the car. I, I'm just like trying to remember no, 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 back no. to the very. I, you guys were wrestling a robot. Oh no, I that I remember. But we were already beefing by then. Like that wasn't like the hatred yeah, was yeah. episodes before that. Well, if you beef you in a decided. car, everybody's gonna. No. I was trying to sneak Man, in, and you were all like, "I'm a trip this boy," and I decided from that day that you're dead to me. Me and Darby got along more dead than normal thing. vampires. We did, and but then you just decided you like Onion Jack better to fuck with me for some reason. <laughs> just it was a real lot of bullying. <laughs> the thing is, Steve Archie, player. Archie doesn't even realize that he has slighted you at all. He's just so has a heart so full of love and loves Onion Jack so much, he doesn't even realize it's made you sad by comparison. He still loves you just as much as he ever did. But just far less than Onion Jack. It's clear. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's fucking well, sure. Onion Jack. I mean, how often do you him? get to just fuck that guy? He's how often do you just get to will NPCs into actual existence? I did it. You guys could try it more true. often. Yeah, um, yeah, I think we can. I've made Onion Jack happen. I love him. Excavo has nine points. Uh, do we have Excavo? I don't see a video. Her, her. No, you're we can hear you. It is weird that her video just gave out at the end. Like, why? How, why would it work the whole time? Okay, just so while she's disconnected, I I swear to God, uh, as a techie, it's because she opted to have a wireless card on her com- nice new computer instead of letting me, even though I offered to pay for Cat Six Ethernet to run to her fucking computer hardwire. She was like, no, 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 it's extra cabling, and now she has a fucking wireless card. And our wireless sucks because it's Comcast. She's yelling at protest from the other room, but because her internet is not yet back up, she can suck it. Well, and she can also let me know if she wants to spend any of that uh, experience. Uh, I see her loading in. She's she's trying. I'm she's sorry. been doing that the whole time. Yeah, really the whole time. It's either oh. frozen or the spinning dots. Hey, Ren, you got like now or never. You got to either jump in here or just do it. No, I mean, she, she can just send me a message. Just, like, whenever. Send it, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not a deadline. You can just. Well, not, later. not a deadline, but like for, for the immediate communications. You prefer and if you want it preserved for posterity in, like, in the video so all of our fans will know yeah. how you spent your points. Here. Tell, tell her it's buy one, get one experience spending tonight only. 50% off. 
fifty percent off. I have eighteen points then. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> no, you can only spend points on half of the items on your character sheet. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> only the left side. <laughs> Man, it's like um, got the guy's grocery yeah, games. <laughs> Expenditure. It's because I've been looking at my other character sheet. Which is in here. Fancy it's gets bad. gets two characters, and you actually get two character sheets. I just have to put all my characters on one character sheet. I know, but I have but I have to make two character sheets. <laughs> you get to make two character sheets. <laughs> I was thinking it'd be cool if we had a character that's like Guy Fieri. <laughs> I'll work on the hair. I'll try to have it ready for next time. Turns out it's just yeah, Onion Jack cool. wearing a wig. Start growing mine out. Shallot Lane is actually Flavor Town. Shallot Lane? I love that. <laughs> uh, that uh, courtesy to Graham for his endless onion Alley. puns. Four onion puns in a row. Onion Alley, Shallot Lane. So many layers. Leek was one of them. I don't remember the other one. <laughs> I don't know. The the wordplay just comes naturally. I mean, even just the word onion has a nice ring to it. There's an off. There's an off. Ramps what a multi-layered joke. <laughs> into Onion Alley. Uh, okay. Well, um, I I think that's all the experience spending we're doing tonight. And uh, let's do this again in like a couple weeks. Love you guys. See you next time. Bye. Love you guys. Bye, everybody. Love you. Bye.